Assalamualaikum and very good day. I'm Dr. Hidayah from the School of Civil Engineering, Faculty of Engineering, University Technology, Malaysia. This is a briefing for transportation laboratory of T4 and T5. So basically, T4 is the asphalt extraction method and T5 is the sieve analysis. Please take note, after watching this video, next step, you have to watch the video of T4 and T5. Okay, so details of the recorded data can be referred to the lab sheet included in the e-learning. Okay, first, let's have a look on the overview of the test. Why exactly we have to conduct this test in road construction? These are the tests involved in the quality checking of the paving works. We know that asphalt mixture should be designed in order to verify the content of bitumen as a binder and aggregate comply with the Public Works Department specification. Okay, the sample of asphalt used is in the form of loose mixture which can be collected during the paving works from the asphalt plant or on site at the back of the truck or the paver. As you can see from the slide, this is an example of the loose asphalt mixture used for the testing. Other than that, the samples of the testing also can be collected from the newly paved road after 24 hours of the paving works by taking the core samples out of the road layers. So the core samples are then heated and converted into loose sample for the testing. So for which layer we normally use this test method to verify the quality of the asphalt mixture? The answer is any layers that use asphalt mixture, for example, like wearing costs, binder costs, and road base. Okay, next, the aim and specification of the testing. For T4, the aim is to determine the bitumen content of the bitumen aggregate mixture. This is to verify whether the asphalt mixture contain enough bitumen to act as a binder. So based on the previous highway engineering class, I believe you are aware that it is not recommended to have too much bitumen or too little bitumen as that will reduce the quality of the mix and the performance of the road. And then for the specification, uh, for this test, we can refer to the H2 T164 and ASTM D2172 for quantitative extraction of bitumen from bituminous paving mixtures. Okay, next for T5 is to determine the aggregate size distribution. As you know that aggregates in the asphalt mixture or bituminous mixture is a combination of different sizes as specified in the standard. Therefore, the content of the aggregates should comply with the gradation limits proposed by the Public Works Department specification in terms of the upper and lower limit. So for T5, uh, the specification can be referred to ASHTO T27 and ASTM C136 for standard test method for sieve analysis of fine and cost aggregate. Okay, this slide shows the compliance of this test with the Public Works Department specification. For the bitumen content determined from T4, the allowable range is within plus minus 0.2% from the design bitumen content. Previously, we have learned about the Marshall Mix Design, right? So, the design between content is based on Marshall Mix Design. So, in this case, we have to compare the value that we've got from this test with the design between content obtained from Marshall Mix Design. And then for T5, the particles distribution of the sieve aggregate should comply with the specification. For Malaysian Public Works Department, Three conventional mixtures of dense graded are normally used for the paving works. They are AC10 and AC14 used for the wearing cost layer and then AC28 with larger stone is used for the binder cost layer. Detailed specification of the upper and lower limit of the gradation as recommended by the Public Works Department are shown in the next slide. Okay, as you can see from the slide, these are the gradation limits based on the specification for AC28, AC10 and AC14. So, which one to refer to? It depends on the layer constructed. 
whether it's AC28 for buying the course and AC14 and also AC10 for wearing course layer. Therefore, after completing T5 tests, the results of percentage passing of the analyzed aggregate distribution should be compared with this specification for the upper and lower limit. If the results obtained of the percentage passing stay within the upper and lower limit, meaning that the results comply with the specification and acceptable. Okay, next, let's have a look on the tools and procedure. For solvent extraction T4, the test is conducted to separate the bitumen from the aggregate. To conduct the test, we use the centrifuge method. As you can see here, the bowl contains the loose sample of asphalt mixture for the testing. And then, the chemical solvent is used for the extraction. For example, trichloroethylene or methylene chloride. This chemical solvent is used to remove the bitumen from the aggregate during the extraction process. It's like the process of bleaching to remove the coated bitumen from the aggregate surface. So typically, a loose asphalt sample is weighed and then the chemical solvent is added to disintegrate the sample. The filter paper of the ring shape, as you can see from the slide, is then used to cover the bowl that contain the sample and then the cover plate is secured on top of the filter papers. Next, the sample is rotated and then the filter paper will trap the dust during the extraction process. Finally, at the end of the test, you will get a clean aggregate without coated bitumen as you can see from the last photo in the slide. So the initial and final weight of the aggregate are compared and the difference is assumed to be the bitumen weight. Then the percentage of the bitumen can be calculated from the total weight of the sample. Okay, so next, a gradation or sieve analysis test of T5 can then be run on the aggregate to determine the gradation after drying the sample in the oven. So this is to remove the solvent residue on the aggregate surface before sieving. Okay, next, let's have a look on the T5 procedures and tools. From the slide, as you can see, the sieve analysis is conducted using the sieve shaker. The different sieve size is arranged where the coarse size is placed at the top and fine size at the bottom. The dry aggregate with a representative sample is weighed and then poured on top of the sieve, covered and then vibrated for about 10 minutes. Finally, measure the mass retained of the aggregate at every sieve size and calculate the percentage passing of each sieve size. Okay, next, let's have a look on the sample of analysis of the bitumen content for T4 as shown in the slide. Okay, in this example, both AC28 and AC14 are selected. From the laboratory Marshall mix design, the optimum bitumen content is 4.8% and 5.3% for AC28 and AC14 respectively. According to the specification, the allowable limit is plus minus 0.2% as discussed earlier. Meaning that for binder cost, the allowable limit of the bitumen content is between 46 to 5.0%. And for wearing cost, the allowable limit is between 5.1 and 5.5%. So, based on the calculation using the formula given in the table, the bitumen content obtained for binder cost is 5.3% and for the wearing cost of AC14 is 5.7%. So, we can say both exceed the allowable limits for the bitumen content. As conclusion, the bitumen content used are higher than the specification and too much bitumen is not good for the pavement as it can cause the potential of bleeding problem. Next, this is the results of sieve analysis where after extraction process, the aggregate is recovered with no bitumen coated. The aggregate then is sieved to determine the size, distribution and compared with the standard. So the result of sieve analysis will be compared with the standard according to the Public Works Department as shown in the table for both AC28 and AC14. Okay, this table shows the results of aggregate gradation for binder cost 
and the analysis that you need to do. Using the mass retain obtained from the CIF analysis, you can now calculate the mass passing and percentage passing. Okay, let's see the calculation involved. For example, the total of aggregate measured is 1052.6 gram. And then to calculate the mass passing, let's choose sieve size of 28 mm as example. Okay, for the calculation of mass passing for sieve size 28 mm, the total of aggregate 1052.6 minus 0 retain means 100% passing. And then next for 20 mm sieve size, 1052.6 gram minus with mass retain of 58.8. And the mass passing is 993.8, which the percentage passing is 94.4%. The same calculation is repeated for other sieve size from 14 mm to 75 micron. Okay, using the formula given, please do your own calculation to verify the values. Okay, next, after you have completed the calculation, you have to plot the percentage passing, upper limit and lower limit. This figure shows the plot of aggregate gradation obtained for the binder cost. It can be seen that the result is out of limit, particularly for the upper limit. This can be concluded that the asphalt mixture contains too much fines and should be reduced during the blending. Therefore, the aggregate gradation is not compliant with the specification. Okay, this table shows the result of aggregate gradation for wearing costs and the same calculation applies as what we have done for the AC28. Based on the mass retain obtained from the sieve analysis, you then need to calculate the mass passing and also the percentage passing. Okay, next, what you need to do is the same thing. You have to plot the result of the percentage passing for AC14 and also the upper and lower limit. Okay, based on the plot, it can be seen that the result is out of limit again, particularly the lower limit. And this can be concluded that the asphalt mixture contains too much coarse aggregate and it should be reduced during the blending. Therefore, the aggregate gradation is not comply with the standard. So by considering both evaluation T4 and T5, the bitumen content and also the sieve analysis, it can be concluded that the quality of this paving works is poor and not comply with the standard. Okay, using the data provided in the lab sheet, now you have to do your own analysis in order to determine the quality of the materials or asphalt mixture used for the paving works. Don't forget to provide detailed calculation and plots of the analysis based on the data provided in the lab sheet. Detailed instruction about the submission can be found in your e-learning. Thank you very much and Assalamualaikum.